The key example is H&M, the fast fashion giant from Sweden, which officially closed its store located in Sandlingtun, Taikuli, Beijing on June 11, 2023. The reason behind the closure was the end of the lease agreement, and this store was one of H&M's largest in China. On the eve of its closure, the store was eerily quiet, with signage on the merchandise shelves insinuating Goodbye is only for a better reunion. This follows the closure of H&M's first store in China, located on Huaihai Road, Shanghai, which was announced on June 24 of the previous year. It was reported that the daily rent reached 150,000 yuan. This year, H&M has also closed several stores in Hangzhou, Guangzhou, Zhuhai, Qingdao, Chongqing and other cities, reducing the number of its stores in China from 479 in 2020 to fewer than 350. H&M sales in China also slid from the peak of about 1 billion USD in 2020 fiscal year, falling out of the top 10 in the company's global sale ranking. One reason was the well-known public boycott in March 2021 over the company's stance on Xinjiang cotton. At the beginning of 2023, Zara closed its first store in China, symbolizing a significant contraction of its business in the country. Several Zara stores had already withdrawn from China the previous year. The American brand Gap also closed several stores in China and sold its China business to Baojun e-commerce for 40 million last November. Other international brands such as CNA and Urban Outfitters have also announced their exit from the Chinese market. In addition, Zara's sister brands such as Bershka, Paul and Bear and Stradivarius have all closed their stores in China. The few remaining international fashion brand stores have seen a sharp drop in popularity and are now mostly deserted. Fast fashion brands originating from Europe attract Chinese consumers with their trendy and affordable styles. In 2002, the Japanese brand Uniqlo, a player in this industry, officially entered the Shanghai market. The fast fashion behemoth Zara followed in 2006, setting up its first store in the bustling shopping district of West Nanjing Road, Shanghai. Over the following decade, numerous fast fashion brands such as Muji, Zara, H&M, CNA and Gap have successively entered in the Chinese market. In 2008, China launched a 4 trillion yuan economic stimulus policy, ushering in a golden era of commercial real estate. The entry of these international fashion brands undoubtedly added extra lure to commercial properties. Domestic real estate developers feared to offer these international brands rental incentives, such as rent-free periods ranging from three to five years, or long-term low-rent contracts, some even provided decoration subsidies. This greatly reduced these fashion brands' operating costs in China, enabling them to rapidly expand with more than 1,000 new stores in 2013 alone. However, these leases have now expired and the rent for commercial real estate in China has been continuously rising. At the same time, these brands have experienced a sharp drop in sales in China. After paying the standard rents, the companies can no longer turn a profit, leading to the decision to close stores. Take h and M store in Shanlingtun, Beijing, for example. This is one of the most bustling commercial areas in China where rents are high. With H&M's already slim profit margins, the closure of this flagship store seems inevitable. It can be said that the rise in commercial real estate rent is a major reason for the closure of these fast fashion brands. Moreover, international fashion brands are also facing substantial sales challenges in China. The fundamental issue is that China's consumer environment does not support these brands. Three major obstacles stand in their way. The weak retail market in China, drastic change in the consumer environment, and geopolitical disputes with Western countries. China's retail market has been severely overdrawn. Firstly, the general public's purse have been drained by the property market, with two generations of family savings squeezed dry. The impact of the pandemic has lasted for three years, leaving little remaining wealth in hand. 
This year, China has suffered its most severe unemployment wave since its reform and opening up. Faced with employment difficulties and soaring house prices, consumers have had to tighten their belts. Fast fashion clothes, which can only be worn for a few days, are no longer their first choice. The affluent classes have also lost confidence, with the real economy in trouble and property and stock market investment fraught with risk. They can only put their funds in the bank. As for consumption, they've become more picky, pursuing better value for money. Under such conditions, they are not willing to consume excessively. Looking at the first large shopping festival after the pandemic, China's Six One Eight companies like JD. dot com, Tmall, and the Ping Duo Duo invested tens of billions of yuan in subsidies and incentives to ensure sales volume. Ping Duo Duo, the king of discount shopping, began pre-selling promotions for the Six One Eight festival two months in advance. However, to date, Taobao, Tmall. JD. dot com and Ping Duo Duo have not yet announced the official total sell volume for Six One Eight, only giving year-on-year -year growth percentages without total figures. It is evident that even enormous subsidies in the tens of billions have not yielded satisfactory sales results. It's akin to the Chinese government saying it will subsidize new energy vehicles for another four years, yet the stock of these companies barely moved. The slogan of young consumers has changed from "Are you cutting off your hand?" an internet term referring to excessive spending, to "Save a hundred percent by not buying." Given the fierce competition in the market, it is a natural choice for international fashion conglomerates, which have to report their performance to shareholders annually, to cut their losses and withdraw. Another challenge that international fast fashion brands face in China is the scrutiny by local quality control departments. The products of these international brands have a production cycle of seven days, are taken off the shelf in fourteen days, and new products are introduced every thirty days. Most are priced around a hundred yuan. While their low prices may coincide with some quality issues, it doesn't mean their quality is inferior to domestic brands. However, it seems that China's quality control authorities have imposed stricter quality checks on international fast fashion brands. Even minor quality issues may be excessively magnified, especially during consumer rights protection activity, such as Consumer Rights Day on March fifteenth. Once these issues are heavily publicized, they can negatively impact the brand's image, leading to a decline in sales. Next, let's look at the consumption psychology of Chinese consumers. They have an absolute preference for high quality and low price goods. This could be because of long-term impoverished living conditions that make them hope to buy better goods with less money, or even hope to buy goods worth 150 yuan for only 100 yuan. Let's describe fast fashion brands in a phrase. What are they? You are Urban Revivo. Even with discounts, it's not very cheap. Muji, I can't afford it. Even with discounts, it's too expensive for me. Stradivarius, even though it's incredibly cheap after discounts, not many people know about it or buy from it. A T-shirt is just over twenty yuan. Uniqlo, only beautiful women can make their clothes look good. Zara, if they don't have a sale, I don't buy. If I buy, I always feel like I'm losing a few hundred yuan. Don't rush to buy in the first week of the sale. Wait until the end for the best deals. This expectation for high quality and cheap good is understandable, but overly high expectations also reflect some characteristic of Chinese society under the influence of Communist Party culture. Such as tendencies towards extreme, seeking shortcuts, and aiming to get the most with the least effort. It's one thing for a single person to think this way, but when a billion people do, just imagine the level of competition any foreign company wanting to do business in China would face. This universal consumer mentality of taking advantage of businesses, forcing fashion brands to continuously press suppliers for lower prices. However, if the price drops too low. The suppliers won't be able to produce the goods, potentially leading to business falling through and the brand failing in China's competitive market. In addition, we have observed that Chinese consumers are showing dissatisfaction with major brands that frequently offer discounts. 
they feel disadvantaged for previously paying the higher price, perhaps overlooking the fact that before the discounts arrive, they have already enjoyed these products. They seemingly do not take into account the pleasure they experience during this period. Perhaps too many Chinese consumers, a loss to the wallet might equate to a loss of joy. They may believe that they must gain the upper hand in the transaction to be considered winners. The decline in sale of international fast fashion brands in China is largely due to the rise of e-commerce platforms in the country. With the advent of online sales, especially during the lockdown of the past three years due to the pandemic, people have shifted to online shopping, thus diminishing the appeal of physical stores. Online stores do not bear high costs such as rent, making online shopping a natural choice for young consumers seeking affordability and convenience. As a result, the physical stores of international fast fashion brands are seeing less foot traffic, which is not surprising. What happens when brick-and-mortar merchants no longer make a profit? The hit taken by the retail industry is just the beginning. Switch gears as early as possible. If Jack Ma isn't doing it, then someone else will. If not on Alibaba, then elsewhere. The wave will certainly come. China's e-commerce platforms primarily include Alibaba, founded in 2003, JD.com, established in 1998, and the Ping Door Door, which emerged in 2015. These platforms all sell products from fast fashion brands. This large platform model can reduce cost and increase efficiency, but it has also led to the closing of brick and mortar stores, which could have created a large number of jobs. Recently, Chinese companies such as Temu, the overseas version of Mei Tuan, and ultra-fast fashion sales platform Xi'an have introduced China's e-commerce model to the United States, attracting a large number of consumers with low prices and diverse styles. However, Western governments and civil organizations have recognized that this low price model has impacted the real economy and the need to regulate such companies is growing. U.S. lawmakers are questioning whether these companies have complied with a 2022 ban on importing products potentially related to forced labor in Xinjiang. To manage political risk, PDD Holdings, the parent company of Xi'an and Temu, has relocated its headquarters to Singapore and Ireland and increased its lobbying efforts in Washington and investments in international supply chains. However, these measures have not entirely eliminated the criticism and scrutiny they face. The low prices could potentially hide labor rights issues and business models that lower prices to gain market share under the guise of competition have sparked widespread concern over whether they comply with the principles of fair competition. It's not just international fast fashion brands that are facing severe challenges in the Chinese market. High-end department stores from overseas are also continuously closing their physical stores in China. The last branch in Shanghai of Pacific Department Store, which is owned by Taiwan's Far Eastern Group, is likely to choose not to renew its lease after it expires in the second half of this year. Before this, Pacific Department Store's branches in Huahai and Bu Yan Chen in Shanghai had closed in 2016 and 2020 respectively, and its department store in Beijing, Tianjin, Wuxi, Chongqing and other places have also sequentially ceased operations. These closures are not without reason. In 2021, the Chinese government fined Far Eastern Group's enterprises in China 474 million RMB and required them to make rectifications due to non-compliance in areas such as environmental protection. Subsequently, Chinese official media severely criticized the Far Eastern Group as the largest donor of the Democratic Progressive Party in Taiwan. In essence, this series of penalties might be associated with the Chinese government's allegations that Far Eastern Group supports Taiwan's independence. Since its opening in 1993, the Pacific Department store Xu Hui branch has a history of 30 years. Upon the announcement of the store closure, many local Shanghai consumers expressed their attachment to the Pacific Department store on social media, 
saying it carries many of their childhood memories and was a high-end shopping destination they aspired to during their youth. French department stores Galerias Lafayette, which once had several branches in Shanghai, has also been closing its doors in succession. In 2019, Lafayette's Changning and 118 branches announced their closure. In 2020, the Hong Kong branch of Galerias Lafayette, which had been in operation for 17 years, chose to close under the impact of the pandemic. Japan's Isetan department store located in Shanghai's Meilongjian Plaza is also rumoured to cease operations after the lease expires. A recent survey of European companies show that European businesses have lost confidence in the Chinese market, with 37% of the European businesses already planning or considering moving their Asian headquarters out of China. 64% of the surveyed European businesses find the Chinese business environment extremely challenging and cannot conduct business in China. 43% of European businesses plan to move to Singapore and 17% would rather choose Malaysia over Hong Kong. In the past two years, 75% of the surveyed European businesses have been actively decoupling from China, hoping to move their supply chains out of the country and 12% have already left China. Given these circumstances, can international fast fashion brands continue to thrive in China? Clearly, it won't be easy.